You think you have a lot to do? Our guest today is an MD, MBA student who happens to be training to join the U.S. Olympic fencing team and compete this summer in Tokyo. How does she do it all? Let's find out. Welcome to Admission Straight Talk, the podcast dedicated to graduate admissions and helping you approach the application process thoughtfully and successfully. Your host is Acceptance founder and world-renowned admissions guru, Linda Abraham. At Accepted, our mission is to get you to that unforgettable moment when you read your acceptance email and shout, yes, I'm in, confident you'll be attending the perfect program to help you launch the career of your dreams. Welcome to the 355th episode of Admissions Trade Talk. Thanks for joining me. Many of you now are thinking about next year's application to medical school, and we have the perfect webinar or Q&A to help you. And it's coming up this Thursday, March 12th at 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. During Asia Medical School application, the title of the webinar, I will give a brief intro and overview of what you need to do to succeed in the med school application process, and then open up the session to your questions. Three highly experienced med school admissions experts will then take your questions during a Q&A, which will take up most of the session. The webinar is free, but you do need to register to reserve your seat. Do so now. It's really easy at exhibit.com slash 355 webinar. You can even do so while you keep listening to me. Our guest today is Kimberly Thompson, a fourth year MD MBA student at Rutgers Robert Wood Johnson Medical School in New Jersey. Kimberly attended Temple University as an undergrad, which she graduated from with honors uh, after majoring in biology and minoring in psych. She has been fencing since 2006 when she was in high school. And I'm just going to quote from a little bit of her blogs about me page. Kimberly is a member of the 2019 national team, completing research in the sports medicine division in the in the Department of Orthopedic Surgery at NYU and studying to become an orthopedic sports medicine surgeon. She's also a 2018-2019 author for Doximity and Kamali is currently training for the 2020 U.S. Olympic team. Kamali, you are one busy person. I really appreciate you joining us. Welcome to Admission Straight Talk. Yeah, thanks for having me, Linda. My pleasure. Thank you so much for joining me today. Now, can you tell us a little bit about your background outside of medicine, where you grew up, how and when did you get involved in fencing and medicine for that matter? Yeah, so I um, am from a town in New Jersey called Teaneck, New Jersey. It's like 20-ish minutes away from New York City. And um, I grew up, you know, kind of like a regular kid. I was interested in in ballet and, and I danced for a really long time from the age of three. I have a younger brother. Um, and when I was in eighth grade, I was on my way to go into the normal high school in our town, Teaneck High School, um, and I was at our Teaneck High School open house, and my mother, um, my mother was with me, and I was, you know, actually dragging her to the dance room because I was so excited about getting to high school and dancing and being on, like, the dance team and all that. When we passed a, uh, we passed a cafeteria. And there was a fencing demonstration going on. And, uh, you know, my mom, she like stuck her head and she's like, ooh, what's this? What's going on? And I was literally like, mom, who cares? Come on, let's go. And, <laughs> and um, she spoke to the coach, the high school coach. And uh, the high school coach kind of um, told her about like the pros of fencing, how fencing is, you know, really unique. And how if I was able to, you know, get involved with the team, it could really help me get a college scholarship. And that um, coming from a dance background, I would have kind of the basics like footwork and balance and all that stuff. So my mom was sold immediately. And she told me that I was going to be fencing in the fall with the high school team. <laughs> That's quite a story. Now, your brother yeah. also got involved in fencing, yeah. right? Yeah. So, But um, you were the first one. I was the first, yeah, so he's, he's got me to thank for all his success, but we both have my mom. <laughs> but yeah, so, um, I, when I started fencing on the high school team, I did that for two years, and then after two years, I really started to like it. I wanted to get better, and for fencing, what you have to do is you have to go to a um, fencing club where you get a coach, and you take private lessons, and you um, you fence several days a week. So my um, my coach recommended that I go to a club in New York City called the Peter Westbrook Foundation. And that is a club that was created by a six-time Olympian, Peter Westbrook, who wanted to help minority kids in New York City area get involved with fencing. Fencing is very expensive, so it's not something that a lot of inner city kids are looking to do. So um, when you start off at the Peter Westbrook Foundation, you go on the Saturday morning program where you like learn the basics 
basics of fencing and they have different ages and different um, skill level. So I started off in the advanced class and my mom said, well, I'm going to go to uh, New York City on Saturday. I'm not living, leaving this nine-year-old at home, you know? So Khalil, my brother, had to come by default. But after the first day, he's like, this is crazy. Like, this is great. I want to go fence too. <laughs> that's how he started. And that's how he got involved. Okay. How did you get involved in medicine? I mean, you're spending all this time fencing. How yeah. did you get interested in medicine and becoming a doctor? So I wanted to be a pediatrician from as long as I can remember. Like my mom had this little dress up box where she put all her like old clothes and like old old um, high heels and stuff in it. And I remember when I was young, there was like a pair of scrubs. So I like walk around the house in, in like scrubs. And I can only imagine me four years old with this pair of scrubs is like drowning me. But um, my pediatrician, I loved her and I loved getting shots. And every time I went there, I was super excited. I wanted a shot, a lollipop, a sticker. I just loved everything about it. So I always wanted to be a pediatrician. And when I got to high school, I was really passionate about um, helping childhood obesity and combating that issue and figuring out how to um, help kids lead, lead a healthier lifestyle. So I would, like, was very dead set on becoming a pediatrician until third year of med school. <laughs> okay, well, I'll ask you what happened then later on. Okay, All right, yeah, we'll, so get you, <laughs> we'll get there later, All right. So you, you were pursuing medicine and basically fencing throughout high school and, and college, right? Yeah, that's, that's right. that was the plan. So if, if my emphasis was definitely on medicine. I knew I wanted to be pre-med. I knew I wanted to go to med school pretty much immediately after college. And then fencing kind of just, like I fell into it, you know, it, um, it was a really cool opportunity. And once I started training at the Peter Westbrook Foundation, all of the kids who I was fencing with were national champions, international champions. Wow. They had been, you know, world championship teams, and they were all getting recruited to go to schools, um, D1 school. They were getting like full scholarships, you know. So that was the first time that I realized that this would be possible because my mom wasn't even thinking about that. She was thinking, you know, someone will throw you a bone and give you like five thousand dollars a year or something. But these kids were getting full rides to amazing schools like you know Notre Dame, Penn State, Ohio State. A lot of kids were going to um, Columbia because we were in the city. So I wanted to be like them and I wanted to keep fencing, especially because it was it was a lot of fun. You know, we're 18 years old. We're traveling around the country by ourselves. <laughs> it was great. Um, so once I got into uh, Temple University, or I got into several schools, but I decided to go to Temple University because their uh, fencing program was really strong. I got into the honors program. I really liked the diversity of the campus. Like It just seemed like the right fit for me. Um, that's when I started getting really, really good. And I was, you know, like 40th in the country um, when I got to school. And then by my junior year, I was sixth in the country in my age group. So I got really, really good. And my senior year, a lot of kids or students, excuse me, they have to make the decision, do I want to keep doing my sport or do I want to go into the real world, get a real job, et cetera, et cetera. But um, I knew for sure med school was happening because from day one, I want to give those kids their shots. Like, that's my plan. But um, I didn't really feel like I had accomplished anything in fencing. You know, um, I had done pretty well my senior year. I was all American uh, after NCAA championships, but I didn't really have any anything to, like, to claim, you know. So I just decided to keep fencing. But if you're going to keep fencing after college, the only thing for you to really strive for is the Olympics. So I said, I guess I'm going to try to make the Olympic team. Let's see how it goes. Okay. So that was in 2012? Yep, that was in 2012. All right, and you were applying to med school while at, at around the same time. What was yeah. the, the hardest part of the med school application process for you? We're going to get back to fencing, but what was the hardest part of the medical oh, school? Oh, man. The hardest part um, for me was the essays. And even though they tell you, so my personal essay, I actually had a great mentor who was the director of the honors, the honors program. And we had 20 drafts of my personal statement. And, you know, just the fact that she was able to sit with me and go through that. Cause you know, by draft three, you're like, this is great. <laughs> uh, so we were able to write this essay over and over again, but the supplemental essays were just so draining for me. And they, I didn't get those until, you know, August when I'm going back to school and mm -hmm. I'm starting the year. So I'm trying to do my um, classwork. I'm trying to um, go to practice. And then I get an email that asked me for like six separate one page essays. So that was a lot. And I definitely missed a couple deadlines, but um, I got into school. So it worked out. Yeah, it all worked out. About how much time were you spending in fencing both as an undergrad and as a medical school student? 
So undergrad, uh, we had practice from three to six and we did, we did that five days a week. And then on the weekends during the season, I went back home to train because, you know, no one's fencing uh, on the weekends in college. So um, mm -hmm. I was spending at least 20 hours a week. And then once I got to medical school and I made the decision to train for the Olympics, I just increased. So I now was going to the gym for an hour um, each morning before classes started. And then uh, the commute to to and from practice really killed me because I was in New Jersey traveling to New York. That's an hour both ways. And then practice itself was at least three hours. So you can add all that stuff up, but that's, that's how, a lot of how much I was doing. Yeah. At least four days a week. And let's, let's go back to medical school for the moment. What have you liked best about your medical school experience at Robert Woods? And it really was a MD, MBA, you already have your MBA, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, I got my MBA. Well, I'll tell you the story. Okay. So, um, Robert Wood Johnson's amazing because, uh, and the reason I chose it was because I felt like when I went for my interview, the the school was interested in me as a person, not just me in terms of you know my stats, like my MCAT score and all that stuff. And I thought it translated really well to everyone that they chose to be a medical student. Everyone that I, that I've gone to school with, and I've been in three different classes at this point. Um, they've all been amazing individuals. You know, we've had people who were um, they started their own business. They, we've had people that came from Wall Street. We, we've had people that have um, done mission trips and um, made a huge impact in the the world and but when you talk to them like I guess when you're talking to me like we're normal people you know we're not anyone we're not like you know extra smart where we're really awkward around people we're not you know like super arrogant because we've accomplished a lot we're just really normal people that have great um goals and are really ambitious so being surrounded by people in that environment was great because you know medical school can be super competitive it can be very cutthroat uh, we i've never felt like that with any of my classmates it's always been very friendly um everyone wants to help each other out everybody gen genuinely wants everyone else to succeed and i think the way robert wood picks their students they have a great way of maintaining that environment so that is definitely definitely one of my plus sides if you're thinking about applying to robert wood you definitely should i absolutely love it um okay. My second year, so actually my first year, we had a presentation on different things you could do um, through the school, and they were dual degrees, so, you know, MPHs, MBAs, JDs, and um, MBAs just stuck out to me for some reason because my mom always told me knowing business, understanding business would be crucial for any adult, and they were offering a one-year program instead of two years, so I was like, wait, this oh, is wow. a great, yeah, why why would I not take advantage of this? Sure. Um so I applied to the MBA program and I did it between my second and third year. And I think it was a great, great opportunity. Do you see yourself using the degree at all or is it more yeah, just? For sure. um, so I think one of the most important things I actually learned was more about personal finance. And especially right now, um, you know, like millennials, we are behind in terms of how much income we're making compared to our parents and our grandparents. Uh, with that combined with student loans, it's really easy for someone my age to fall behind in terms of financial planning. But business school was great in terms of teaching me what I should be doing. Even if you can't do that much, you can still do a little bit here and there, which adds up. So that was great. Sure. And then I learned a lot about healthcare, um, um, like pharmaceutical decisions, supply and demand of healthcare. It was just like amazing things that I think everyone should learn in medical school, but we already have so much crammed in. It's, it's hard to fit, you know, one more semester of business stuff in there. That's true. What could be improved at Robert Woods in terms of your medical school experience? So, um, so for me, I decided that I was going to go into orthopedics during my third year of medical school, and that was really difficult. It was a huge transition because just the competitive level of pediatrics to orthopedic surgery is night and day. And I feel like if I would have had a little bit more exposure to ortho or any other field, like maybe Durham, maybe anesthesiology, those rotations that we don't have third year and those things that we don't get to see until kind of like the last minute, I think I would have been more prepared earlier. So if there was a way that we could just have more exposure to every single field. So I don't think I have any interest in radiology, but um, you never know. So if I would have seen something for a second year, maybe I would have gone in radi radiology. Yeah. I don't think our school and a lot of other schools have a great way of introducing students to every single field. 
Okay. All right. I think it's a fair criticism. Now, what, um, so you, you talked here about you're switching your, you know, you had this dream to be a pediatrician basically until year three and then in year three, you switched to, I guess, orthopedic sports surgery, which is quite a yep. switch. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And then the other question I have, so, so kind of how did you, how did you go through that switch and, and why? And then the other question is, you seem to be taking a rather long time to get through medical school. Can you kind of go yeah, through that? How does that work? <laughs> yeah. So um, orthopedics. Okay. So the way our schedule is uh, for third year of med school, things are, are grouped differently. So pediatrics, family medicine, OBGYN, and um, psych are in a different semester than internal medicine and surgery. So my strategy was to do the rotation that I wanted, that I was most interested in last, so I could show them how smart I was after third year. You know, I know all this stuff, which meant that internal medicine and surgery were first for me. So um, I finished internal medicine, was not feeling it at all, and then I get to surgery. I'm super nervous. You know, surgeons have this reputation for being um, really blunt, really mean, really forward, um, moving at a really fast pace. Demanding. Meeting. Right. And, and and I have no interest in this. So I'm just going to sit here like, I don't even care what's going on. But little did I know, um, it was amazing. So I get surgery. And the first day, you know, these people were moving like me, like I'm very type A, like, let's get this done. Why is it taking so long? So I, I saw like me and all of the the surgeons that I encountered in the residence. And all the stuff I was seeing was just so cool. Like I'm, you know, um, cutting, cutting into abscesses, abscesses. I'm, you know, holding people's intestines. I'm, I'm taking on spleens and gallbladder. Like this is really awesome. <laughs> and so um, I was telling my mom every day, I have, an, I have another cool story for her. And after two weeks, our rotation is eight weeks. She said, I think you should really consider, you know, going to surgery because you just haven't, like I've never heard, I hear, I've never um, heard you say, sound so passionate about this. So it was just so it was just so happened the people who I actually follow the most are ped surgeons. So maybe that was like adding to it too. You know, like these little kids are so adorable and we're fixing their hernias. Like I love this. So we had an <laughs> elective that we uh, were ch we could choose for the last two weeks of our rotation, and I chose ortho because I wanted to do. Even though I wanted to do peds, I was thinking about sports medicine, like peds and sports medicine. So I said, all right, well, ortho, it's kind of like the surgical side. Let me see how that goes. Um, that should be interesting. And um, my whole class apparently wanted to do ortho. So all these people were trying to take my elective from me. So after six weeks of people wanting my elective, I was like, no, I want to see what this is about. Because, you know, like, what's the excitement? What's the hype about? So my first day... We're doing an osteotomy and we're cutting this um, 16 year old girl's leg and there's two surgeons and one of the surgeons is like, I don't know if she'll, she'll be able to put the screw in. And then the other surgeon is like, I think she can do it. I think she can put it in. Do you want to, do you want to put the screw in? I said, of course I want to put this screw in. So I put this screw into this girl's leg and half of me is like, I've got to do this because this man over here doesn't think I can. But the other <laughs> half, like, this is the coolest thing I've ever done in my life. <laughs> this is amazing. And then that's, that's when it happened. I was like, I can do this every day for, for the rest of my life. Just fix people and like cut into them and put screws and drills. And this is amazing. So that was it. That was it. Okay. So that was, that was how you made the switch from pediatrics to sports surgery or ortho, orthopedic sports surgery. And what yeah. about the kind of. Right. The elongated process. Yeah. 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 Um, Thank you. Part of, I would say about 50% of it is because uh, of fencing. So, I tried to make the 2016 Olympic team, and in pursuing that, the year before the qualifying year, or the year of the qualifying year, I was going to be in my third year of medical school, and that just wasn't really conducive to me training. So third year of medical school, you have all these rotations. For me, a lot of them were even more South Jersey, which means it would be much harder to get to New York City to train. You'd never know when you're going to get let out. And more importantly, you have to be present, you know, so you can't you look at the clock and well, can they let me out now so I can make the train and get to practice and all this stuff. And you're only allowed a certain number of absences. And I, we travel, I have eight World Cups that we've traveled up to, to Europe and Asia and all the other places. So that wasn't going to fly either. You know, me asking, oh, I know I have to be here, but do you mind if I go to Korea for a second? Like, I just, <laughs> <laughs> so I, um, so I decided to get my MBA in that time because it would be a, 
a very useful degree for me to have. It'd be a great use of my time. It'd be closer to practice. And I wouldn't feel stressed out trying to juggle too much stuff. So then I come back to med school after the Olympics. I didn't make that team, but I was an alternate. I come back to med school. I finish my third year. And then I decide on um, orthopedic surgery. So now I'm faced with the, the issue of it was advised to me that I should not graduate medical school, especially entering a competitive spe specialty, until I'm ready to apply to residency. But that's, it's 2017 and now I'm trying to make the 2020 Olympics. Um, so a lot of my mentors and my dean told me the best thing for me to do anyway, to, to match an orthopedic surgery would be to do research. And that'd be perfect for me needing to wait until after 2020 to apply to residency because, you know, it would just take a couple of years. So that's why I've been in med school for a very, very, very long time. But um, it's it's worked out really well. And, and I think all the decisions that I've made have been beneficial to my career. And fencing, not being able to graduate until 2020 um, has actually helped me realize all these things are useful. And I'm glad that I've done it. Okay. So... So you took so you took the year that you were um, training for the 2016 Olympics. That's when you did the MBA, and then you came back and you got the, the third year of medical school, correct? Yeah. And because you knew you were going to train for the 2020 Olympics, I guess you've been doing you you got a leave of absence or you got permission from. So Robert Woods has been fairly supportive of your ambition. Oh, they've been extremely supportive. I mean, it's and it's great because I've every been flexible. time. Yeah, every time this happened, I was so nervous because I was like, well, what if they, what if they say no? What if they're just like, no, you need to finish medical school and we're not going to do this. <laughs> but my dean yeah. has been um, very supportive of my dreams and she knows that I have huge dreams. You know, like I'm sitting here telling you, I just want to go into orthopedic surgery out of nowhere. She's been, all of my deans have been very supportive and um, they've been, uh, they, they guide me along the process. So I did two years of orthopedic surgery at, uh, research at NYU, and this year I'm taking off of school because I'm just training, and my dean still checks in with me and reminds me that I need to start applying for certain things like away electives and all that, so they, they've been great. I definitely could not have gotten this far if my school did not want me to get this far. So you're planning to complete medical school actually in 2021, right? Do the fourth yeah. year, 2020, 2021, and then start that, you know, hopefully residency in orthopedic yep. surgery. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it all makes sense. It all makes sense. And it's wonderful that Robert Woods is as, as, as flexible as, as you've great. indicated. Yeah. All right. So right now it's basically fencing full time. Right now I'm fencing full time. It's been amazing. I, I'm so used to running around like a crazy person and, you know, like I only have six hours to get this research stuff done. I have to be as efficient as possible. And now I can, I can get sleep because I definitely, definitely did not get sleep before. Um, I'm always on time. I'm always super early everywhere I have to go because before I was always just making it, you know, because I'm trying to maximize my time in every location. Yeah. But yeah, now I'm, I'm meal prepping. I'm bringing my food with me. I'm not eating out all the time. This is great life. <laughs> this is a great life. It's nice to have some focus, right? Yeah, okay. In one place. And you're also, are you, are you currently also writing for Doximity or, or not this year? So, no, I was a Doximity author last year, which is a really great mm -hmm. experience. Um, but the only reason I didn't want to do it this year is because since I'm not in the medical, well, I'm, so I'm a blogger. I have a blog called Saber and a Stethoscope. And because I'm not in the medical field right now, I thought it would be a little difficult to get um, ideas to be blogging about just because I'm a remove, but I would love to do it again in the future. Okay. Now, was there ever a time in either medical school or even when you're doing research or now that you're fencing when you thought about leaving medicine? No, thank goodness. Um, especially because there are people that get to medical school and say, this is actually not what I wanted to do. Uh, one of my research colleagues at NYU had just graduated and he said he did not want to be um, a physician. Like, he just didn't want to practice. So no, um, I, I think that it's, ex it's going to be exciting for me to, in my career because I don't know if I'm going to be, um, you know, a doctor, only a doctor for 30, 40 years. I definitely know I'm going to be, have my hands in, in other pots. I'm not sure what those pots are, but um, I think we live in a great time now where, you know, millennials, we can choose, pick and choose what we want to do. And when we get tired of something, we can just move on. <laughs> but no, I, I love medicine and um, especially, you know, going to orthopedics. I haven't decided what I want to do, like if it's speed or sports or, or um, 
whichever, but whichever I pick, probably sports, it, I'm going to have a lot of variety and I'm going to see different types of patients and be in different types of arenas, hopefully literally and figuratively. So I won't be tired of medicine at all. Right. Do you see yourself continuing to fence after the Olympics in 2020? Uh, so yes and no. I It's funny because a lot of people who stop fencing still fence, you know, they'll like come to the... Yeah fencing club and my my fencing club we have a lot of olympians like a, a lot like a ridiculous amount of olympians they'll throw their stuff on for fun and they actually have a um a veterans category that starts at 40 years old where they go to like world championships and stuff like that so i don't know you like, gotta wait I, for that one <laughs> i i do i do but by the time residency is over <laughs> but um i don't know i definitely i'm definitely not gonna you know hopefully go to the Olympics and then leave the Olympics and leave my fencing stuff in the venue. I'm definitely going to, you know, keep fencing. It's just a matter of on what type of level and I don't know, we'll figure it out. Okay. Well, you seem pretty good at, at figuring things out as you go. Yeah, now you, plan. It, plan. Yeah, yeah. Now you mentioned your blog, Saber and Stethoscope, and you also have a very active social media pres presence. When did you start writing the blog and, and why? So originally I, I wanted to start writing my blog, um, the qualifying year of the 2016 Olympics because mm -hmm. we're traveling all over the place. Like I said, we have eight World Cups and we have four national competitions. We're all over the world. And I just thought it'd be really cool to like write about, but there was just so much going on. I was exhausted and I just couldn't get it done. So yeah. my third year of medical school, I was like, okay, this is great. This is a great time to start my blog. because I'm going to see a lot of things mm -hmm. on my rotation in the hospital. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, I started my blog uh, third year and it, there's an education um, aspect a fitness aspect and this year there's a road to Tokyo aspect so um, it, it's just been a great outlet for me to you know see things and, and write about what I see and a lot of my fitness blog posts that I write are you know struggles that I have so how do I how do you maintain a workout regimen when you are traveling all over the world or just working all the time and it just seems like so much work to get to the gym for me i feel the same way but it's so important to fencing like i have to find a way so i write a lot of posts that i think are relatable to other people and then i've got travel pictures so all the places that i go i post my travel gallery and i've been to some really really cool places so it's just been great to kind of also for me just look back and see all the crazy stuff i've done in the last four years with the 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 it's an excellent blog. I've, I did visit it before before the podcast, and I thoroughly enjoyed, especially the travel pictures. The, the fencing pictures were also kind of cool, since I don't know. Him. I actually do know one person who fences, but uh, I haven't never been to a fencing match or anything like that. But uh, no, it's it was very very enjoyable. Now you mentioned that you obviously hope to go into orthopedic uh, sports surgery. How do you see your career evolving? You obviously have several years of residency. Do you see yourself working for a large practice, going into your own practice, um, working for HMO? What, how do you see it going or do you have any idea? Oh, uh, I don't know. So I, I, I'm trying to figure out if I want to do a lot of people, uh, a lot of fellows that I've spoken to in orthopedics suggest going to a private group practice. It's just how you can like recoup your, your funds quicker. Um, so I think there's that aspect. I also, after my two years of research, I actually really like research. So Ooh. going to academic medicine um, is definitely a an option too. Um, and then I really, 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 really want to work for an NBA or a WNBA team. So I, whichever avenue helps me get there faster, that'll be really cool too. And yeah, I don't know. I just, <laughs> I, I have no idea. NBA is in basketball, not not fencing, right? N oh, NBA. NBA, NBA is in basketball. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm a huge Different. basketball. Yeah. So you're a big basketball fan too basketball fan yeah and i think that would just be really cool just to be and i really like well obviously being around athletes so just to be around high caliber high caliber uh athletes it would just be amazing for me to work with in los angeles the uh my my i'm not much of a sports fan at all um but when i was uh a teenager i babysat for the children of dr job from the Kerlin job institute which was the big uh, LA based sports wow. medicine. That was my claim to fame. That was about as close as I got to sports medicine. That's but, awesome. <laughs> well, wow. I mean, you know, it was a long time ago, but, um, yeah, he lived on my block and I babysat for his kids. 
<laughs> okay, <laughs> that's a, a complete non sequitur. What would you <laughs> like me to? What would you like me to ask you? So um, this year, okay, so it takes about thirty thousand dollars for um, athletes to become Olympians in the U.S. Wow, a lot of yeah. I mean, so a lot of things that we have to do are funded by ourselves. And I have a athletic trainer, I have a sports psychologist, a nutritionist, uh, my own personal coach, and we have to pay for all that out of pocket. Thankfully, some of our trips are paid for. But then uh, a lot of times this year, I'm doing international camps where I just go to another country and fence with their national team. That's on my own, of course. So really? I'm wow. looking for people to help me raise $40,000. And you can find my link on my, um, the donate page is on my website, on the home page of my website. And if you go to www.kamalithompson, K-A-M-A-L-I Thompson.com, it says donate at the first button and it's got exclamation point. So anything helps and I definitely appreciate it. You're very well. Okay. Well, I think you got a worthy cause there. And we're going to link to Kamali's site as well as to other resources related to this podcast from exhibit.com slash 355. So you can, again, get there really easily. Kamali, I want to thank you really very much for your time today. It's been delightful talking to you. And uh, thank you for sharing your story and your insight and being so generous with your very limited time, even if you are just, 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 just fencing this year. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thanks for having me. This has been great. My pleasure. Listener, thank you too for joining Kamali Thompson and me for Mission Straight Talk's 355th episode. Final reminder and a favor. Don't miss Accepted's upcoming webinar, which is really mostly a Q&A, and it's called Ace Your Med School Application, a live Q&A with three med school ap experts. Again, it's free and easy. Just register at exhibit.com slash 355 webinar. And the favor. If you find the show worthwhile, please tell a friend about Admission Straight Talk. They'll thank you, and so do I. Thanks again for coming. This is Admission Straight Talk, produced by Accepted, and I'm your host, Linda Abraham. I'll talk to you again next week.